Turning to health news, dramatic new numbers about HIV and AIDS in this country, a young person with the disease properly treated can now live to old age. Back in the 1990s, a 20-year-old AIDS patient could expect to live to 56, but now in the 21st century, that's climbed to nearly 70, an increased lifespan of more than 13 years. Heartening news, but the bad news is the number of people with HIV AIDS is at an all-time high. And as Randall Pinkston reports, a disproportionate number are African Americans. So your husband knew that he had yes. HIV yes, and never told you? No. Ida Byther Smith is one of America's uh, new faces of AIDS, an African American woman who contracted the disease from someone she trusted. I will believe in abstinence until you get married. But what did it get me? It got me AIDS. We got to put files in there. On a shoestring budget, Byther Smith now runs an AIDS community outreach program on Chicago's South Side, teaching clients to avoid the mistakes she made. For instance, for years she refused to even admit she had the disease. I even had people to tell me, oh, you must have did something really bad for God to punish you like this. Ignorance and fear partly explain an exploding health crisis in America's black community. Although just 13 percent of the population, the Centers for Disease Control says that African Americans accounted for 49 percent of new HIV cases in 2006, the most recent year for which they have statistics. The epidemic is also exploding among teenagers and young adults. Between ages 13 and 19, 69 percent are black. Between ages 20 and 24, 56 percent are black. No matter how you look at it through the lens of gender or sexual orientation or age or social economic class or level of education or region of the country where you live, black folks bear the brunt of the AIDS epidemic in this country. Phil Wilson, an L.A.-based AIDS activist and survivor, says early activists sent the wrong message to the black community. The mischaracterization of the epidemic in the early days, you know, calling the epidemic a white gay men's disease, uh, first of all, made black folks think that we didn't have to pay attention to the disease. The development of new miracle drugs dramatically increased survival rates, but the drugs are expensive, and many black Americans have neither private insurance nor the funds. A lot of people are dying because they're on a waiting list. And they can't get medicine. And they can't get medicine. And AIDS activists complain they can't get enough attention either from the presidential candidates. And when Obama and McCain do mention the disease, their concern is often directed towards AIDS in Africa, not in America. Randall Pinkston, CBS News, Chicago.